Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Always back with another video on the channel. So this is going to be our sixth video of our Spring Boot series. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a database to your application. So yeah, without further ado, let's get started. In order to access a database from your Spring Boot application, you need a few things. A running database, whether initiated by or embedded within your application, or simply accessible to your application. You also need a database drivers, enabling you programmatic access to your database, usually provided by database vendor. Also, we need Spring Data Module for accessing the target database. Certain Spring Data Module includes appropriate database drivers as a single selectable dependencies from within the Spring Initializer. Quickly take a look at Spring Initializer again. It allows us to create a new project, but also allows us to add dependencies to our application. I'm going to click on Add Dependencies. And you can see here, this is a project that we used. This is Spring Web, which allows us to create a RESTful APIs. If we go to SQL, we got this JDBC API, which allows us to connect to different databases. So all the SQL based databases like MySQL or Postgres, these are the drivers for those or sometimes drivers are provided by the windows itself. We also have the Spring Data GPA. Within SQL section for this Spring Initializer, you will see Postgres drivers. So it's basically a JDBC based drivers that allows program to connect to Postgres database using standard database independent Java code. So I'm gonna add that to the project as well. So right if we click on generate now, this is going to create a new project which will include all these three dependencies. Let's go and add these dependency into our existing project. Before we do that, I'm going to click on this explore button. And when you click on explore button, you will see that how this project is going to look like when you open that in IntelliJ. Now in the dependencies, we have this starter data JPA, and this is what we need. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my existing project and paste that there. Then also we're going to need this runtime only flag with this org postgres scroll. Copy that and I'm going to paste that there as well. And once you add something to your project, you got to go to this window and then here you need to click on this button here. So I'm going to click on that. It is going to refresh the dependencies and we can see at the bottom it is going to download some jar files. To be able to connect to Postgres, we need to make sure we have Postgres running. There are many ways you can run Postgres locally on your computer, or if you have any Postgres running remotely, you can connect to that as well. My preferred way to run Postgres locally when I'm developing is by using Docker. There's a command for starting a Postgres database in Docker. Okay, before you can run this command, you need to make sure your Docker is running. And also you have pulled an image called Postgres. If you haven't, this command will automatically try to download that image. I'm gonna press enter and you can see we have this container running. Type Docker PS and I've got this running and the port is mapped to four, five, three, two to four, five, three, two. Okay, that means I can connect to the Postgres now. So if we can now successfully connect to that Postgres database, I'm gonna use IntelliJ database features to connect to it just to show you. So go to data source, click on Postgres, and here you need to type your username, which was Postgres for us. Password was password. And when I click on test connection, you can see I can connect to this database running in Docker. Okay, so that's cool. Now we're going back to our application and here in the source folder, we have main resources and we got this application properties. So within this, you need to add these three lines, spring data source URL, which is your this URL. At the end, it should be a Postgres database name. Postgres is a username and a password. 
Okay, once you've done that, just refresh your Gradle dependencies. At this stage, we have written all the code that is required to connect to Postgres database. So in the next video, we are going to dig deep into data and see how we can use Spring Boot to be able to store data into a database. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.